Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Let me ask you a question. You ever hit rock bottom? I mean, the rock bottom that knocks you to your knees since the last breath out of you. Two years ago, I hit rock bottom. I was sitting in a hospital bed, and I had a doctor look me in the eyes, and he told me, he says, the only way we're going to save your life is we have to cut your leg off. You see, I spent eight months in a hospital bed, and my wife, daughter, 24 hours a day trying to keep me alive due to an infection. How can I tell a wife who was standing her, there, who I took 20 years earlier, till death do his part, that I didn't want to go and have my leg cut off. I was ready to go. I was ready to say goodbye. The pain was so excruciating. That's all I thought about. All I wanted to do was go to sleep, never wake up. But I couldn't find the courage to tell my wife goodbye. And so the next day they cut my leg off. And I woke up. And besides losing a part of my body, I lost a part of me. I sat at home for five months in a wheelchair in the dark. I hated the windows. I hated looking outside. It looked like I was in prison. Every day I tried to build up the courage to say goodbye, to end the pain. Physical pain was leaving, but I still had pain inside. The pain that I was never going to be like you, or you, or you, ever again. I went from being a boss of many people to a crippled old man in a wheelchair with no future. And each day, I couldn't find that courage, that little bit I needed to end it. But each day, it slowly went away. And I asked my wife one day, I says, I need a purpose in life. Again. And she says, why don't you come to the schools and volunteer with the kids? They would love you. Why would they love a man with a fake leg that half the time falls on his face instead of walking? She said, try it. See if you like it. I walked into that school the very first day, and I still remember it. Kids come up, high five me, hug me, wanted to walk me down the aisle so I wouldn't fall. They thought I was a robot. They thought I was the coolest thing in the world. I had a little bit more hope after that. But I still had a part of me that was missing. A part of me, the purpose of why I was here, I couldn't figure out. What I'd done wrong in my life to deserve what I'd got. And then one day I was sitting in the lunchroom watching these kids eat their lunch. And this little boy caught my eye. He took his pizza, wrapped it in a napkin, took his french fries, wrapped it in a napkin, put him in his backpack, took his applesauce, he took his mouth, put it all in there and sent it up. And when he looked up, he saw me looking at him. And he quickly looked away. And then he put his head down on the desk, at the table. And I went over to him, and I asked him, I said, are you all right? Why don't you eat your lunch? What he told me changed my whole world. He said, I was able to eat breakfast this morning. My little sister hasn't eaten since yesterday. I asked him, I said, where's your sister? Let's get her a lunch. And with her tears flying down his eyes, he says, you don't understand. My sister's three years old. I live in a car. My dad can't find a job. I didn't ask for him. Of course, I brought him to lunch. And for every day, for the next two months, I kept my wife's refrigerator in her office, packed with lunch bowls so he could take two home every day. And finally, they were able to get a house since they don't have a job. He was better. And he had a smile on his face. And he was able to eat his lunch. But there was something still missing that I was looking for. So I kept hunting, trying to find that purpose. 
And I decided, I'm just going to let my leg speak for me. So I started a nonprofit foundation called Chorus for Kids, mm -hmm. asking people to take four quarters a month. You can find them in your couch, you can find them in your car, to the school district where you live. If everybody did that, we could mm -hmm. cut homelessness of kids in half. But see, it was hard to get the word out. So this last summer, I walked a little bike 700 miles from here to Eureka, California, raising money and awareness for Chorus for Kids. But it still wasn't enough. There was something I needed. I kept trying. I would go into schools. I volunteer. I talked to these kids. I worked with these kids. And found out there's 48,000 homeless kids going to school right now in the state of Washington. We live in America. There's 600 just in the district, school district where I live. 600. So, Next time you see four quarters or two quarters or one quarter sitting in your car or on your table at home, think about the homeless kids and reach out. We're coming in at Christmas. We're coming in the winter. There's kids out there sleeping in a car that need a coat. Go to your local schools and see how you can help. Because I found out losing my leg was it because I'd done something wrong? It was because it gave me the chance to do something right in my life. And that's what I do. So I encourage you to reach out. And like I said, next time you see a quarter, think of course for kids. Thank you.